time to get your fix. Come on down, get your Hello, my name is Zachariah with Old Man Gaming, and welcome back to another horrible game review. Before we get into it, three disclaimers. Number one, the word horrible in the title of this content does not refer to the game itself necessarily, but instead, the review. I do snap judgment reviews here, meaning I get about five to ten hours of each game, sometimes more, sometimes less, and I'm just trying to give you an idea of whether you're going to enjoy this game right off the bat. Also, in that vein, I do not give scored reviews. I don't believe in scored reviews for video games. I think they're one of the most subjective forms of art, and therefore I will give you an overview of what the game is, and I will give you a list of the pros and cons, in my opinion, as all games are. Then I'll tell you whether I will be personally sticking with this game past the purposes of this review or not. That being said, this week I am doing a fan-requested review. Just so you know, if you want to request a a review of me. All you have to do is go to the Discord and request it, or you can request it in the comments below. I am happy to do fan requested reviews as long as I am able to, especially right now when there's not a lot of AAA games coming out to take a look at. This was requested by my pal Dan uh, in the comments on YouTube. So, the game I am reviewing today is Guacamelee 2. And man, was this game an up and down, a high and low for me. Uh, what Guacamelee 2 is, is a strange kind of hybrid, kind of almost Metroidvania style game uh, with 2D platforming as well as 2D fighting. Uh, but there's a heavy emphasis on the fighting with almost fighting game mechanics, a little bit simpler than that, but still a heavy combo based, uh, uh, special move based kind of fighting system. Uh, what it is, is you, I, I should tell you guys right off the bat, I did not play the first Guacamelee, uh, so I can only infer from the original story that this, what this game is, or what that game was. Uh, in the first one, he defeats a bad guy, he rescues a woman, uh, using the power of some magical luchador mask. He rescues her. This game takes place after that, about three years later, maybe ten years later, I can't remember the amount of time, um, but basically he has gotten rid of the mask, he's gotten fat, he's just a dad, uh, kind of living in this Mexican village. Lo and behold, out of nowhere, catastrophe strikes uh, that could in fact um, threaten him and his world as well as many other dimensions that he will have to travel to, uh, find, redon his mask, and uh, take on these this new set of bad guys. The game itself actually alternates between two different kind of sections. One is a platforming jumping section. Uh, a lot of the game takes place in this. You use a dodge ability to kind of pass through dangerous objects as well as bad guys. Um, and you also use certain special mo movement based abilities to access higher play uh, places. There's a lot of jumping mechanics, a lot of puzzly jumping mechanics throughout this game. Um, and then you also get locked into these lucha fights, which basically you'll enter a room, doors will lock, and you'll have to fight wave-based enemies until you get through them. Both the enemies and the platforming in this game get increasingly more complicated and diverse uh, as the game continues, starting very simple, almost too simple, which we will get into in the pros and cons, um, and then slowly getting more complicated as you get more abilities and more techniques to fight. Um, the same with the fighting. Uh, both equally difficult, they continue to grow as you go along. There's also a lot of humor meant to be in this game. Uh, there's a lot of jokes um, from all sorts of the characters going on, and the game is very text-based. So, uh, that's pretty much your rundown of what this game is. So let's go ahead and uh, move into the pros and cons, because man, did I have a lot of them. Alright, let's start positive. Number one, uh, this game has an amazing, amazing payoff uh, as the game progresses. Um, again, we're going to talk about kind of its slow start in the cons, but uh, one of the things that's really cool is the puzzling, jumping mechanics. Every one of them is smart and intelligent, at least 
from what I fell into. Um, and while the fighting starts very boring and running the mill, it's it gets more complicated and puzzly as it goes along. And that's where this game's like true, true, like greatness lies is in this actual like movement and the way these traps and these rooms are set up. Uh, an example would be I was uh, playing in the Jade Temple area, um, and there would be these like passing like almost like dimensional kind of rifts um, and as the rift passed it would actually change what's going on in front of you so like platforms would appear when they were in the rift uh, weapon um, enemies or uh, traps would actually disappear when they're in the rift or appear in the rift and you have to figure out which one it is and move with the rift there was an entire room that was just full of lava that the lava was gone in the rift so you had to make sure to move through the rift while moving through the lava. It was a very cool, really, really great level design here. And what's awesome about it is it's not the kind of level design that just drops you in and expects you to get it by killing you over and over again. This is great tutorial build-up based level design. You start with a thing, it shows you how to do a thing, then it gives you a trap uh, that you, allows you to get past it, and slowly things become more and more and more complicated. Um, some of the powers in this are just absolutely phenomenally fun to do. There is an eagle leap, which equates kind of to web slinging in a way, uh, but it's in this 2D environment, and the way they set it up is just makes it so fluid the way you can move through a level and uh, move around obstacles. And uh, like I said, that's just, that's just how they do this game really well is that level design. My next pro is the fighting. Uh, while not nearly as satisfying as the movement puzzles were, uh, the fighting is good and it's technically sound. Again, it suffers from the same con that I'm going to talk about in the cons when I get there. Um, but they set up these really awesome fights where like, certain bad guys can only be hurt by certain moves. Um, and then you also have this throw mechanic, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, basically, after you hit a, a, a bad guy so many times, you can press Y to grab them and then aim kind of like a suplex. And it hurls them across the thing. You can hurl them into traps, you can hurl them into walls, you can hurl them into any other enemies. And it just makes the comboing feel really good. Uh, you can get into this rhythm where you hit a guy like three times and hurl him, and it takes out a bunch of guys, and then you run in, you hit another guy you know, hurl him before the other ones get up. You can just get into this really nice rhythm. Once you figure out what you have to do with the fight, uh, it moves really well. There's a good flow to it. Okay, so that's unfortunately where our pros end. And those pros are very good. However, I do have quite a few cons with this game, um, which is kind of a bummer. I never like to be hard on games, especially independent games. But um, one of the things I noticed that before I get into the mean greet, uh, meet the, the nitty-gritty of the cons, I want to just give this kind of overview. Um, this game made me want to quit it an hour in. I was sick of this game. I did not like this game at all. I stuck with it, and uh, it slowly kind of pulled me back in with the movement and stuff. But we're going to get into why I didn't like it, why it wanted to make me quit it right off the bat. And one thing I always say to people is if you don't like a game right off the bat, don't play it. Walk away from it. It's not worth your time. Games are huge time sinks, especially if you're an adult with responsibilities. Don't play something you don't like. So why I didn't like this right off the bat? First of all, all of the fun stuff that I just described in the pros, the really complex, interesting fighting, the really complex, interesting movement puzzles, none of that happens for about two to three hours of this game. In the beginning, this seems straight up rudimentary. The fighting is very simple. There's not a lot to it. There is no special jumping stuff. And the amount of time you spend for a 2D platformer doing very, very basic stuff is too long. Nearly unforgivable. They needed to get to those really cool moments faster, and they didn't. While intelligent level design being starting with something, like explaining something through movement to somebody, and then growing on that is great and present in this it does not kick it, it's just too slow they could have done it a little bit faster which is what gave me that rubber band feeling where like i was just totally out of this game i was just playing it to get through my time so that i could do the review and then all of a sudden i was really enjoying this game and playing it for fun 
Um, that being said, I have another couple of cons. My next con is the music in this game. It is terrible. I do not like it. It does not help to build the momentum of the game. It does not help to build the, 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 the moments or the emotions in the game. It's really just kind of this very genetic kind of mariachi band strumming. It changes from level to level like it's not always the same thing, but it almost feels the same thing. Like I actually at one point uh, was so sick of it and thought it was the same thing that I actually had to go to two different places just to make sure that the music was a little bit different. And that's a little bit irritating. Especially in a game with such great action uh, scenes, you really want that soundtrack behind it to just get that heart pumping like uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night or something. Con number three. The writing in this game is terrible. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sh I might get some crap on this one. But uh, the jokes were beyond juvenile to me. Uh, they fell flat to me. Uh, you know, it's all text-based writing, and I found myself after the first, like, two and a half hours just skipping through the text altogether just to get to the next action scene because I just didn't care about the story or the characters. None of them interested me. I mean, there's some goat sages that you talk to, and they each have a joke, and none of it, like, it, none of it worked. I also almost felt like there was too much weird Mexican humor in it. Like, like everything was this like stereotypical Mexican culture thing, which I I don't have any problems with cultures, but like, just everything was like a sacred guacamole or a or a magical chicken or something. Like, I felt like you could have gotten more creative with it, could have gotten more interested with the writing. And it definitely didn't suck me in. It didn't keep me in my attention. Really, the only thing that was keeping me in at that time was the, you know, the running, the jumping, the, the really good action scenes. And the final con I want to say, this is a minor one and shouldn't hinder you from playing it, but it irritated me. Um, and I, it might be something that I'm doing wrong, but I looked at every setting and couldn't fix this. For whatever reason, whenever I start this game up on my PC, it stays in windowed mode. So you'll actually see in the footage, you can see the bottom of my taskbar in there because I literally couldn't get this thing to be full screen no matter what I did. Um, and I started other Xbox Games Pass games just to make sure I didn't have a setting miss set or something like that. And they all started in full screen just fine. But for whatever reason, this game would not leave windowed, which... I got a list as a con because I ha that leads me to believe that it's something with the game. And I found it a bit irritating. So that brings us to whether or not I'm going to stick with it. I got to say, I'm probably not. Look, while the action scenes are incredible, they're really great, really intelligent level design, I'm not a big enough fan of a 2D platformer or a Metroidvania to play something that doesn't have all the other accoutrement with it. So, like, I need good writing in a game like this, too. I need good music in a game like this. And it just doesn't give me enough of that. So I just, I'm just probably not going to go back to this. I, I have too many other games that I'm interested in. Um, all said and done, though, I don't necessarily think this is a bad game. I don't want this to go down in the history as a negative review. Because there are some great things this game does it's in its action, in its platforming sections. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that I found very irritating, very off-putting, and it takes way too long to get to the good stuff, um, to the point where if I wasn't doing a review, the other stuff that I found irritating would have kept me from ever getting to the good stuff. And that's kind of a travesty here because there is some really good level design. So, I hope this review, uh, found you guys well. Um, I hope that, like, one of my first fan-requested reviews unfortunately was negative that the person who requested it does not take offense to it i thank you for the request and anything else you want to request i will happily take a look at and if anybody else wants to request it out there you can do so at facebook at old man gaming dh on twitter at old man gaming nine you can join our discord the link is in the description below you can influence this and all of our shows from there and until then, please share, please like, please subscribe, and of course, as long as you guys keep watching and listening, I will keep making them, and so will the rest of us. So I'll see you guys next time.